right. And tonight is going to be very interesting. Uh, I'm going to try something very new uh, for myself, which is I picked up some resistance bands. Um, these were very affordable. Uh, they're TheraBand uh, brand, and they're about 15 bucks at my local drugstore. They're, they came with three different strengths. Uh, so the yellow band is the lightest, uh, the red band is the next uh, heaviest, and then the green band is the one with the most resistance. Uh, so the actual weights for them are, uh, for the yellow it's a 3 pound resistance, for the red it's 3.7 pounds, and for the green it's 4.6. Uh, and those resistances are based on um, stretching it to 100% additional length. Uh, so whatever length you have, if you double that, you're getting about 4.6 pounds of resistance from the green there. Um, it can flat, they can stretch up to four times their length, um, but I think it's recommended not to do it more than like two and a half or three times. So uh, I'm going to think about that as we're uh, trying to implement these into the Ring Fit adventure. So I've been kind of thinking about what type of skills are going to be uh, able to work with the resistance band, um, and I'm going to take my time and do it kind of safely. So uh, due to that, I'm going to mostly be trying to do this with some yoga skills, uh, which are going to be kind of slower, easier to control, and I can kind of test how the resistance band feels. Uh, I do think there's quite a few skills in Ring Fit Adventure that the resistance band can be added to. Um, so yeah, but today's day one uh, of exploring resistance bands in Ring Fit Adventure. Day 104 of our adventure. Uh, quite often I say to myself, how could I make overhead squats harder? Actually, I've never said that in my life. Uh, however, we're going to do it anyway, and we're going to try this with a resistance band. So this is going to be kind of interesting. I'm just going to put this down actually for a second here. So. Okay. So, spread our feet wide and raise both arms. Oh, wow. It's like, I feel the upper back muscles engage, keeping the posture straight there, uh, right down through the core, and of course, all of the leg muscles uh, that comes with the squat motion. Um, but wow, very good. Very happy with that first one. Uh, so overhead squat, success. Okay. Wow. 
Okay, so that works. Ah, this is not gonna work. <laughs> Let's try out our boat pose. So with boat pose, I am going to use the lightest resistance, and I think this one should work definitely better than pedal rush. take a little bit of finesse to figure out. Hmm. Maybe I need to shorten this one up a little bit. Yeah, cause that. Hold on. I was just making sure that I was bringing my legs up first to relieve the tension before I brought my spine off the ground and that way it was not causing an increased amount of pressure on my spine but I was still getting the ab activation from the resistance band when I was bringing my legs back up if that makes sense so I don't know be careful with boat pose I think because uh, I think it could be possible for the resistance band to put a lot more stress on your back, so definitely be careful with that one. Uh, tree pose. This one I think will be interesting. Um, my prediction is that the resistance band is going to give me a little bit more stability, so it'll make the tree pose easier, but it might activate some more muscles uh, on this side as well. So let's uh, take a look here. I don't so, really know exactly what to expect from these. Uh, I am going to opt for the lighter uh, resistance band for the most of the remainder of these workouts, just as I get to know how it, uh, how it makes me feel. Um, but for this one, I'm just going to stand one foot on the resistance band. Place the other foot. And for this, I'm hoping I can line it up. say maybe the one thing to be careful about with tree pose is how you're stepping on the resistance band and just make sure that you have a stable footing um, because if you have a tree pose where you hop around on your foot a little bit in order to maintain your stability 
you're going to lose the resistance band. Uh, so make sure you have a very solid tree pose, I would feel, uh, before using too much uh, with the resistance band on that one. But I feel like it, um, it gave me a little bit extra activation right on this side, right above the hip. Uh, tree pose is always good for, for the hips right here. But I feel like this muscle group, like right here, got more activation as well as the shoulder on this side uh, when I was going around this way and similarly on that side. <laughs> side step might be, might be interesting. So I'm definitely gonna need a maximum. I need to make sure my feet are equally placed apart. Crazy. Here we go. Doing the motion actually inverse of the way you're supposed to. The ring is supposed to reach the peak in between each step, but I feel like the way I was doing it there might actually work out best for the for the uh, resistance band. Because if you do it the way that the animation asks for, and I'm just going to take a second because wow, that got me moving. Um, but the way that the animation asks you to do the side step, which is when you're stepping across, that's when the ring con is up. So if I was to do this, it would spread the whole resistance band to the maximum resistance, which means that, that would, might be the best explosive benefit we might get out of doing sidestep with a resistance band. But for me, little old me with first time uh, trying this out, I think instead where when you have your feet closer together, you bring the ring con up and then down and across, you're still getting resistance activation, but you're doing lower body and then upper body. So it's down and then up, down, up versus up, down. I think that, uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. But that actually worked decently well. Um, I think it's all about getting your spacing correct across the resistance band so that your feet have the right ability to move and your arms. I'm actually pretty stoked about this one, uh, doing standing twist with the resistance band. I guess the idea here is we're going to have extra resistance on the spin. So I can probably choke up quite a bit on this one, since as we know the resistance band can stretch up to four times its length. So with this, if I stretch it up to here, that's about double the width. Let's try the standing twist. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. 
I think I might be able to use the resistance band in even different ways uh, with the standing twist to get even more activation. I felt, definitely felt it more, uh, more in the hips than I usually would uh, for a standing twist. Uh, and definitely in the arms as well, uh, keeping the arms fully uh, stretched out with maintaining that resistance means that you could also get workout from your arms the whole way up and I could feel it in my shoulders as well. Uh, so maintaining that posture while you're rotating back and forth helps strengthen your shoulders. Uh, and yeah, I was feeling it. It was good. So. Just gotta be careful because of the ring con the Joy-Con on the leg. So maybe this needs to go like this. There we go. All right, this is crazy. C'est parti. Cet exercice fait travailler le bas du corps. Très bien. I think with Revolt, my lunge, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm feeling great. So, what is my plan here? I think I want to put this on my back foot. So, my right foot is going to be behind me. Haha, interesting. How's this gonna work? <clears throat> Can I do that? That doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel right. Maybe instead, this side, like this, this side, switch the grip, come over the shoulder. It's gonna need a bit more slack on that side. Means the foot positioning. We're getting creative. Here we go. Over the shoulder. And we grip. All right. And we're in position. And. There we go. talk about this in a minute. Wow. Okay, so I think I figured it out. So for this, I'm going to want to switch my grip like this. Switch my grip here. And then step down on. This is going to be the foot that's behind. Step through with the front foot. And this is going to go over the shoulder, and we got this. Woo! Oh man, okay, that was awesome. Woo! Okay, we'll put this down for a second. I'm swimming in resistance bands. Okay. Uh, that was amazing. So, the band that's over the shoulder 
and you're bending down this way, so the band is across the shoulder, this side trap and oblique gets fired, absolutely fired. When I get down into the, into the, the very deepest part of that lunge right here, the whole side up here is super activated because of the band that's pulling across the shoulder here, as long as you maintain your posture well. Woo! I'd say that is a win. Okay. Scuffle Bell, what do you have for me? Yeah, need a chest. Here we go. What resistance shall we use? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling like we can probably use the green band. So, we don't need the ring for this one. So, for need chests, I feel like this one should be... Hmm. It's got to be secured here. I think it'll be in this kind of grip. Both the feet on it there. Come down. Hmm. Hmm. It is experimentation here. Uh, bear with me while I find out the best uh, posture and poses to have these in. So, I do want it with an under grip. Under grip. And then the under grip. Okay. Keeping on the ground is going to be the challenge here. I might have to do this with fists to start with. got to figure out the grip a little bit better on that, but I think that positioning worked well, and obvious, uh, it definitely adds more resistance uh, to all the muscles used in that knee to chest movement. That was really good. Uh, using the resistance band, uh, so band we're going to stretch out a little bit, use our flexibility, and channel. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit easier with a visa band. The red band. So, for this one, let me see. I probably want an under grip for each. And With the leg that was stretched out, definitely activated the muscles right here, 
definitely felt it a lot more uh, for that stretch coming up. And uh, and yeah, definitely it gives, it gives more of an arm workout uh, for that movement as well. Uh, and on the far side, kind of like for the Revolve Crescent Lunge Pose, you felt the activation more on the side that didn't have the band. With the fan pose, I felt the activation more on the side that did have the band. So as far as your uh, the side of your core muscles there. So interesting how the different skills uh, make you feel different ways. Just trying to think about these things as I move forward here. And uh, yeah, ab guard. Here we go. Uh, for our, ah, our resistance band testing for today. I feel it went really, really well. Um, overall, we tested standing twist, sidestep, plank. Um, we tested overhead squat. We tested knee to chest. And we tested hip lifts. Revolved crescent lunge pose, fan pose, tree pose, and bow pose. Uh, overall, I feel like all of them worked fairly well. Uh, some of the yoga ones you want to be actually careful with. Uh, funnily enough, bow pose and tree pose. Uh, for tree pose, be careful of your footing. Uh, as you are on one foot, uh, be careful of how you're standing on the resistance band. And if you have a tree pose where you have to hop a little bit to maintain your positioning at any point, you might lose control of the resistance band, so uh, so just be careful of that. And with boat pose, um, I feel like that one could be potentially dangerous. Um, I don't 100% know with that one yet, um, but I felt like it had the potential to put a lot of stress on you, on the curvature of your spine. Um, but I feel like if you execute it correctly, uh, what I found is that it gave me an incredible uh, abdominal activation. Um, and I did that by just keeping your uh, back kind of mostly on the ground and bringing your hips up, your, your knees up first, uh, and then bring your head up to meet it afterwards. Uh, and I felt like that was a pretty safe motion. Um, but yeah, overall, a uh, very, very good day today. Uh, and on we go. We got this.